You know, there's always a brother in the crowd. There is always a brother in the crowd that says, brother, not me, man. You don't know my past. You don't know the places I've been. And you don't know the things I've done. There's always, always that brother. My brother's Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he tells us in the authentic hadith in Bukhari, he tells us of a man who killed 99 people. How many did he kill? 99. So my brother, you, your past, the past of the brother sitting next to you, in fact, every single person sitting in this room and their past collectively, we don't even come to a quarter of this man. He killed 99 people. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Open up Riyadh Salihin, chapter 2, repentance. Look at it there. So after 99 people, something entered his heart and he wanted to make tawbah. So he asks the people, you know, he says to him, where can I go? I want to make tawbah. So the people said to him, look, there's this guy who's a abid. He worships Allah day and night. If there's anyone you're going to ask, go and ask him. So the man goes to him and says to him, brother, I've killed 99 people and I want to make tawbah. Can Allah forgive me? So this abid, so he asks the abid, this guy's worshipped Allah day and night. This guy's never seen anything. This guy's in worship day and night. So when he hears 99 people, the guy freaks out. He can't comprehend killing one man, let alone 99. He says to him, Allah can never forgive you. So the man goes, well, since Allah's not going to forgive me, we'll shak like one of anyway, bro. So he kills him as well. But he polished him off because he didn't like his fatwa. It shows you the ruthlessness of this man. He killed a habit, not someone who, who offended him or someone who, you know, eyeballed him or someone who opposed him out on the streets. He disrespected. No, no, no. This guy's a worshiper, bro. But because he didn't like his fatwa, he killed him and made him a hundred. Authentic hadith, Bukhari, huh? He says, but Rasulullah he says, but there was something in his heart. He really wanted to turn back towards Allah. So he asked. And then the people said to him, look, yeah, don't hang around here, otherwise you kill us all. There's an area, there's a scholar there. There's a scholar there. Go and speak to him. It's a long story, I'll cut it short. He goes to the scholar, he says to him, I've killed a hundred, can Allah forgive me? Now look at the difference between when you ask, you know, the guy in the mosque, you know, the guy with the big beard, when you ask him and you ask Alim, he says to the man, and who can stand between you and Tawbah? Who? Now we're talking. The man's thinking, now we're talking. I like this thing. He says to him, for you to make Tawbah, you got to leave this environment. It's a very bad environment and the people, they're not helping you in doing good. There is a town. There is an area. Go there. There are good people. These people will help you worship Allah and they will help you pull up and change. So the man was sincere. He packs his stuff and heads off to the town. On the way, death meets him. He dies. So the angels of forgiveness come down and the angels of punishment come down. And there's an argument. The angels of mercy said, but he made tawbah. The angels of punishment said, no, no, no. He killed a hundred people and he didn't complete his tawbah. He was on the way. <coughs> So Allah sends down a third to be a judge between them. The angel says, measure the distance. If he is closer to the town of sin, then let the angels of punishment take him. But if he is closer to the town of forgiveness, then let the angels of mercy take him. So they measured the earth and unfortunately for him, he was closer to the town of sin. Authentic hadith in Bukhari. Allah ordered the earth to change its dimensions and made him one hand span closer to the town of piety. One hundred.
hundred people. But he was sincere. Allah gave him this. <laughs>